Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Video Games Ahoy Hall of Fame. My name is Jonathan Radford, and today I'm joined by Dav Gabe. Hello. Dav Weeks. Hello. And Zach Hamilton. Hello. Guys, this is, like I said, the third episode. Um, should we should we do a bit of a recap first? Uh, Good idea. We move on? Let's do a recap. Me. So, uh, as I said, this is the third episode. We've had two previous episodes. In, in the first one, we had Super Mario Bros. and Papers, Please. And then Shigeru Miyamoto and Troy Baker. That was a that was a pretty solid month. Uh, however, the last episode we did was it's it's going to be hard to beat. Uh, we had Breath of the Wild, and Super Metroid, and Satoru Iwata, and Koji Kondo, which is uh, again that is that's going to be pretty hard to beat. That's going to be pretty hard. Um, but before we begin, uh, those are the games and the personalities. Let's talk a bit about who can and what can get inducted. Like I said, this is the Video Games Ahoy Hall of Fame. There will be two categories. That is the game and personality, either a creative or creative character. There will be a ranked voting system in place. And each participant will rank the other nominations to find two clear winners. But votes cannot be used for your own nominee. The points will be given as follows. First place gets five. Second place gets three. And third place gets one. One measly point. Uh, Votes will be tallied at the end of the podcast to determine which two games and two personalities will go into the VGA Hall of Fame, and nominees can't be brought back for at least three months unless someone else decides to bring it back themselves. If two nominees in second and third are equal on points, then the two people that brought those suggestions will discuss to see if one will uh, will forfeit, uh, I guess. Uh, Yeah, yield. Should we go with yield, not forfeit? (laughs) Yield. (laughs) Uh, And we also don't coordinate with each other with regards to what we'll be bringing. Last month, uh, both myself and Dad brought Satoru Iwata, for us, I think that means that person or, or, or game just deserves to be there. Um, so yeah, should we get on? Um, should we get on with the first nomination? Should we go to? Uh, should we start with person? And is, uh, should we start with Dav Weeks? Dav Weeks. Ooh. Okay, so I might be bending a rule here. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm not Good going start. for a person. I'm going for a team. Okay. Video and games it- ahoy! Let's go. <laughs> 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 uh, and it is the development team of Rare, circa 1994 Ooh. to 2002, wow. who has developed a real golden age of gaming. That is a really Ooh, solid entry. Yeah. So we are talking about the group of people responsible for a blindingly consistent yep. bunch of games. We're talking... <laughs> Everything starting with Donkey Kong Country on the SNES, going through Blast Corps, GoldenEye, Diddy Kong <sighs> Racing, Banjo Kazooie, Jet Force Gemini, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark, Banjo Tooie, oh, Conquest Bad Fur Day. That is beautiful. one hell of a run. Yeah, what a run. All different I as well. The thing is, jo- like, yeah. all genre defining in some ways as well. It's like ridiculous run. And it's interesting that you say genre defining as well because a lot of these games kind of the genre changed yeah. like mid through development. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Goldeneye was meant to be like a Virtua Cop on the rails kind of gunning thing. Ah. And they thought, you know what? Let's make it first person shooter. Fucking defined a genre. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, yeah. And apparently Diddy Kong Racer was meant to be some kind of role based strategy game. Wow. Huh. That is so different. <laughs> and, and then it was a racer. Is it just like a, is it just like a full team of like ADHD sufferers? They're all just like, oh god. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But the reason like I wanted to bring it up personally is because I think it's the first time where I like in my history with games, and I was obviously a young teenager at the time, where I kind of linked uh, the name of a developer with quality yeah yeah yeah. Y- you know yeah yeah you know i'd go like oh what, what's this game i don't know oh it's by rare it's probably gonna be good yeah, <laughs> i'm gonna totally, keep my eyes totally. peeled and I, sure. I don't think i ever had that before yeah so for that reason alone like i just think that is a really really important kind of golden age of gaming yeah yeah, I, that's I, a really solid entry. That's 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 a that's a good shout. I mean, I, I'm the same. Like, I'm roughly the same age as you as well. So, like, I totally know what you mean. Having like rare being synonymous with just quality Seeing that games. Golden like token of the art. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I definitely remember going. Oh, good. It's going to be good. Every game that I bought of rare in the, in the '90s was just it was it was good. I, I can't remember playing a bad one. Like, but yeah, I mean. Dad, that's the second time in a row now. You've absolutely blown us all away with your with your choice. So uh, we're yeah, gonna have to yeah, keep. What was your entry last week or last whenever it was? Oh, it was uh, Koji Kondo. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. What I would say is 
because we're already in episode three, and I don't want us to go off the rails, maybe we say the Stamper Brothers, who are the guys that founded Rare, and were there until Microsoft Yeah, until... Yeah, I mean, Dab, would you be willing to accept the Stamper Brothers as... as... They basically yeah. are Rare. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah it's, they, it's, they, it's they helmed rare. it, yeah, so that's fine. Let's go with Stamper Brothers, all right? <laughs> awesome. Um, Great! Awesome, let's uh, let's let's do that. Stamper. Damn it, Dav. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Awesome. Um, should we go with? Should we go? With, I'm just going in the, in order from here. So Zach, can you do, do? How do you? How do you feel about okay. going next? Okay, I'm gonna go next. Um, I'm gonna go for a developer, designer, director, um, who's who has a mixture of things going on for him. Oh, wait. Stop me! Stop me when you think you know the know the developer. Better not be Drockman. Is there? <laughs> One of the early ones, who framed Roger Rabbit at the game? Not a great game, but we get on with Goof Troop, which is a great game. It's Goof the Troop. basis for Four Swords, Aven- uh, Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures. It's basically the exact same game yeah, that yeah. came out 15 years before. Uh, Aladdin for SNES. Um, Dino Crisis. Uh, um, Devil May Cry. Oh. Uh, Beautiful Joe. Vanquish. Oh, right. The Evil Within. Oh, no. Fallout 4, believe it or not. He is part of Fallout 4, but most importantly, this is the guy that came up with Resident Evil and coined the phrase survival horror. Kamiya? It's Shikami. Ah, Shikami. Uh, Shinji Mikami. Shinji Shinji Mikami, Mikami. okay, yeah, my goodness. Uh, He... Evil Within? Yeah, Evil Within. Um... Speaking of genre defining, we're, we're in we're in October, so I wanted to go a little bit spooky Ooh, themed. Yeah, I got to tell you, I think Resident Evil One to this day gets a bum rap, in spite of the fact that everyone loves it. I think any criticism that it gets is a little unfair, given the state of horror at the time, because horror games at the time were shit like Night Trap that we yeah, talked about recently Trap, on the show. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Night, Night Trap, Trap is a fucking <laughs> It's it's a pantomime. It's the yeah, funniest it game is. ever. If you haven't played it, please go and play it because it's fucking brilliant. Oh, it's God. a it is a comic masterpiece. Um, so I <laughs> unintentionally, but still. the original the original Resident Evil has its comic moments. But at the time, I gotta be honest. I played that game when I was a kid, and I was playing with my teenage brother, and I'm pretty sure he was as scared as I fucking was. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that um, once you get into the remake, you get to Resident Evil One on the GameCube. That shit is still perfect. Um, I, I honestly, uh, I appreciate it's not everyone's cup of tea, that style of game, but in terms of horror games, it still looks beautiful. It's still scary as fuck. Yeah. Um, the dialogue has been redone with new voice actors. And Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> fixed. We don't have shit. We, there's like loads of like cheesy lines that we don't have anymore. I still Wait, quite like... Don't the open che- that door. <laughs> I still quite like the cheesy lines because they kind of, you know, they got a bit of nostalgia, but... Yeah they needed redoing and so so the space of what was resident evil one came out what 90 what are we saying let me look at 96, it 96 was it 96 man 96 is yeah. so early to be having that level of so it's for 96 and then the remake was in 2002 so that's six years later what where they decided all right it's time for an overhaul but since then i don't think that game has needed an overhaul in fact they've done uh, uh, remasters and whatever, but they've not had to reboot it, which they definitely yeah, yeah. would if they had the money. Of course, you do have Resident Evil 2 and 3 that are now being totally redone in a new mm. style. Uh, but I think that's a a, um, a fashion thing more than yeah, it is yeah, yeah. to do with it being not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms of like the over-the-shoulder thing uh, needed to be redone. The other really important thing to mention, actually, is Shinji Mikami uh, was not only the director and like creator of Resident Evil 1, Wait. but the creator of Resident Evil 4, which if for anyone who doesn't like the Resident Evil series, Resident Evil 4 is the perfect Resident Evil game because it's the basis yeah. of every over-the-shoulder shooter now. I mean, yeah. uh, speaking of one of my favorite games, The Last of Us is completely <laughs> based on it. Uh, any game that you've ever played with an over-the-shoulder third-person shooting mechanic, Fortnite, fucking anything, is based on Resident Evil 4. Gears of War. Gears of War is after, after Resident Evil 4. Uh, yeah, but it's not based on Resident Evil. I know, mean, the style is. Yeah, the the, 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 the third person it over did, the shoulder yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It defines the defines the mechanic. It definitely like because because it was it was because uh, no like, one was doing anything with that level of precision. Even in first no. person shooting at the time was still a bit cog. <laughs> Like, first-person shooters at the time, unless you were playing on a PC, which, admittedly, lots of people were, but if you're playing on a console, nothing was precise like that. Mm. It was, what, fucking... 
time splitters yeah. and shit. Yeah, time, he, time he splitters is good. Like I did like time splitters is, is good, but it's yeah. not. It doesn't hold up the way yeah. Resident Evil Four mm. holds up. Yeah. Mikami did also make Killer Seven, which is a very questionable game. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Put that on your plus. But then, and to be fair, we did have Shigeru Miyamoto, and we have a lot of questionable games from that dude. <laughs> Especially towards. But like, none of them are quite as like offensive to women. <laughs> I actually never Killer played Killer Seven. Killer Seven. I left it off the list because I didn't know anyone knew anything about it. Do you guys know about Killer Seven? I never played, I played it. Killer Seven. Never played yeah. it. Um, all right, Zach. Uh, just just purely based on time, uh, I'm gonna have to. Leave no, it sorry, there, I went that, off on one. No, that's absolutely fine. I, I it's, <laughs> it's a good shout. Though. I mean, it's again two solid. But, well, not just all the two very good shouts. Damn, Cape, I'm going to go in this way, so then I'll, I'll end and then I'll start and then I'll start the next one. So, w- so what me, are you going with? I'm going with the guy who um, just oversaw the purchasing of Shinji Mikami and his studio Tango Gameworks, who was owned by Zenimax and now owned by Xbox, and that is Phil Spencer. Ooh, Ooh Phil okay. Spencer. Wow. A lot, of, a lot of heavy hitters this week. Yeah. You're getting the big guns out. You haven't got to me yet. Yeah. We're talking, head of my Xbox. Dad. <laughs> We're talking head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, who took Xbox from the gutter where it rightly belonged in 2013 when the Xbox One was announced and has lifted it to now be comparable with the PS5. And, mm. and for my money, is a better service than what Sony are offering. It, they've, gone, they've gone pro-consumer. He's advocated cross-platform play. Um, he, backwards compatibility is absolutely huge. The studios they've taken, they've, they've bought Mojang, they've bought uh, Obsidian, we're talking Fallout New Vegas, we're talking Outer, Outer Worlds, we're, we've got Bethesda, they just bloody bought Bethesda for God's sake. <laughs> like, mental. Um, the, the adaptive controller, which I think never gets mentioned, but really should be, they... If we talk about accessibility and how Last of Us 2 handled it. Xbox invented a whole system of controller which can be used for any system and you can even like plug Wii remotes into it. And like it's so designed for so many different um use usage cases and I think that's incredible. XCloud, like the only cloud service in my opinion that works the way it should do. <laughs> yeah. Um and the fact that he's willing to put Xbox games and Microsoft own games on other platforms. Um, you look at sort of how they've supported the Switch as well. Uh, you can play Minecraft on the Switch and you get Xbox achievements. <laughs> That's mad. That is pretty he, good. He, in my, for my money, he's the reason why we're no longer talking about console wars. Yeah. He has managed to foster this kind of like k-i-n-d-e-r this kind of gaming internet sort of um zeitgeist where people are in general more willing to accept that people play different games on different Mm. systems people can play with each other on different systems for my money he's the guy that has changed the industry from going what i felt was a slippery slope downwards into fanboyism to the Hmm. nth degree and is actually elevating it to adults. Adults are able yeah. to call themselves gamers nowadays and not feel bad about it and can actually have conversations with other people who appreciate different things, which in a world of such polarity, I think is really refreshing. Yeah. And it's rare to see. All right, awesome. Link to <laughs> neck. I mean, how do I, how do I really compete with that? Okay, I'll try um <laughs> here okay here we go here we go uh again all right is it I'm just gonna nintendo? Read it. I'm, it's, it's actually not nintendo um uh, so i'm gonna i'm just gonna read up this this little blurb okay uh sometimes referred to as the beethoven of video game music japanese composer Nobuo uematsu has made his career and reputation from his soundtracks to the enduring final fantasy video games the series is noticed for its incredibly cinematic feel and much of that is down to uematsu uh, I'm just going to quickly say uh, this is actually from uh, Classic FM Hall of Fame after they inducted him in 2013. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through some of the things he did. Every Final Fantasy up to 10 with, uh, with contributions to other games in the series since, including the 7 remake, Chrono Trigger, Romance and Saga, Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, Lost Story. He tours the world with his band playing rock, re- rock arrangements of his back catalogue from Final Fantasy and world tours based entirely around the music from Final Fantasy happens or used to happen nearly every year with near sellouts guaranteed. I should know 
because I went to one at the Royal Albert Hall last year and it was spectacular. Um, I, I, I know you. I know Zach hasn't played Final Fantasy, but I'm sure it must have some of the music he's probably heard. I mean, I there are moments in Final Fantasy seven and ten that I can think of the top of my head that are directly linked to music that I hear moments and see them. It's like is one of those things where they're linked both musically to, to, to everything that's happening on screen. And I, he to me like 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 classic Fenma just said is probably. Probably, he's definitely up there with Koji Kondo. Personally, I feel like maybe he hasn't done as many genres as Koji Kondo. But, I mean, in Final Fantasy VI, he wrote an opera. He wrote a 10 minute, like a little 10 minute, obviously not a full opera, but like a little 10 minute opera for the game just because it fitted the scene. Like, there are so many things he's done, like, that, yeah. He's, he's, he's just, I, I could listen to his music all the time and we were supposed to have uh, some of his music at my wedding. That's how much I, I I love I love his music, but yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my guy uh, yeah. Naboa Uematsu. Um, oh, should we go boys to are the? Making it hard. Yeah, this is not. This, uh, should we should we go to the? Um, should we go to the nominations? Who do, who are we gonna go with? I'll give you I'll give you two minutes. Have you guys made so any progress? Uematsu, Uematsu, Phil, Phil Spencer, Spencer uh, Mikami, Stamp- and the Stamper Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Wow! Well, well, well. Okay. Oh, this is so hard. Right. Okay. Let's get this done. I'm gonna go five for that one. Yeah, I think I've got it. Whew. Three for that one. Also, if anyone sees me one. swatting, by the way, it's because there's a fly, like just buzzing right by my eyeballs and it's getting so close every time I'm like get away, get Let away. Live, I'm imagining I'm watching a cartoon and you just stink <laughs> yeah exactly just <laughs> smell lines <laughs> smell lines coming off alright should we um should it's we bad giving any of them one point I know honestly <sighs> and and yeah I, I really do feel bad I, I feel really bad um alright what, go... what was the name of the composer Nobuo Omatsu yeah all right, oh. I've got my points in. All right, right. I'm ready. you guys I'm ready? Happy about it. All right, um, should we start with Dav Weeks? Because we, we started yeah. from that way, yeah. Dav, who are you going to go with? Okay, so my top score, top of the league, top tier, is going to be Naboo Matsu. Because yep. I yeah, equally just love that music yeah, and it's... i know exactly what you mean by just having it like associated with so much stuff in your head yeah it's yeah, some beautiful yeah. stuff like um a great chill out song for me is besaid island from final fantasy 10 is a that was gonna, that was gonna be in my wedding that was gonna be my. i love that tune. it's a beautiful song it's yeah. genuinely beautiful you know that and zanaka ruins you know, like yeah. it's literally in in my shuffle playlist for pretty much yeah anything um yeah, so absolutely, it's got uh, you know it's really uh, strong choice. Yeah. Uh, next up, I'm going with Shinji Mikami because, again, personally, I I have a real affinity with the Resident Evil games. I love them. They they do mean a lot to me too. Um, the only reason Phil Spencer's at the bottom is because if it wasn't for the fact that Dav talks about him every week, uh, I wouldn't actually know his <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> but this what I would say, if he has had any influence over crossplay for yeah, online yeah. multiplayer, he deserves a place because playing Rocket League on four different consoles oh, with you guys yeah. the other day. That was yeah. so yeah. much fun. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> is an amazing thing. It was so much fun. I was explaining yeah. that to my girlfriend. She was like, we were talking to some friends who were playing on their Switch and she was like, Wait, they're playing on another console? And I was like, Yeah, of course. And she was like blown away by that because yeah. like, we can course, now. Is, yeah, yeah. That's, we that's can exactly do how it should the be. The future is here. Yeah, right. All right, uh, Zach. What, what, how about you? Uh, also, thanks, uh, Dav, Dav. Weeks. Awesome, Zach. How about you? So, um, unfortunately, something has to go on the bottom. And since I've never played the Final Fantasy games, yeah. it's got to be a matter. Uh, you knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry, I'm I sure I would love the Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. I've heard some of the music, but not very much. Uh, and I've not and played anything. And to be fair, the one, the one, you, one game you have played, he, he wasn't yeah, really he involved with anyway. So yeah, nor did I especially that? get into the music for that yeah. one. Cool. Uh, That's fine. I which mean, puts yeah. um, number two is Phil Spencer. I, again, I have to say, I'm, he's not someone I'm totally 
aware of um yep. but again if he has any influence on on any of that i think it's it's important that he goes in there mm. which puts the sam bros at the top because honestly uh the the rare games man they i, I think they mean a lot to everyone who yep. played games in that era i don't know certainly anyone who had an n64 definitely awesome uh great awesome uh dav gape what are you going with hello <laughs> hello all right Point. One point goes to um, Shinji Mikami. I don't like Resident Evil One um, <laughs> at all. Fair enough. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love Aladdin. I love the game for Aladdin. Um, I didn't know I he did to, Aladdin. That's amazing. I had to look it up. Yeah, he, he doesn't even like it. He thinks the the Mega Drive version's better. Yeah, but um, I love that <laughs> game, man. But yeah, he goes to one point. Um, three points goes to Nobuo Uematsu uh, because yeah he is just he's a class act he is if Koji Kondo's in then Uematsu should be in as well there's yep. no reason there's, like for me I think Uematsu is possibly a better composer than Kondo but um, I'm an amateur and I have no, I have no idea what <laughs> I'm talking about but he gets three points five points has to go to the Stamp of Bros Dav, you sold it to me when you talked about seeing that rare logo and that being the first time you sort of thought of developers as like, oh, that's they made this game. This game is going to be good. Yeah, that completely resonated with me. That's something yeah. I didn't re- remember feeling, but I remember booting up the game, seeing that spinning gold R, and going, oh, this is going to be so good. Hmm. Even though I didn't have a concept of what a developer was really at that point, I was like, exactly. this is going to be great. Yeah. It's got the R thing, and yeah. They've, they've got to go in, surely. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Um, so I'll, ju- I'll just uh, briefly go through them. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go from highest to lowest, just because it's going to be quicker. Highest, uh, Stamper Brothers. I, again, I, I think for me personally, I, we listed last week, we talked last week, one of the questions for the quiz was the highest rated rare games, and four of them were over the 90, and none of them were Donkey Kong Country. It's like, when Amazing. when that's when the highest, when, when the, the, the probably some of the biggest games are the Donkey Kong Country games, and they're not even their best reviewed or best rated games you'd know that you're working with a company that just brings the goods and it's a shame actually um because we're actually going to talk about this in the podcast in a bit uh but it's a shame that they haven't made any um ga- ban- new banjo games any you know any other games from those series that they definitely should um in, in with three points uh i i did go with shinji Mikami. uh not because i again i think re- the fact that it, resident evil i played resident evil one when it, when it first came out and i like you zach i shit my pants <laughs> yeah, and I'm not a massive fan it's of horror. Fucks with me, I, I'm, I I'm like not. It. I, I'm not like it's when you walk to like the first corridor and the dog jumps through through the window. Oh. And you're like, it's like it, that caught me so off guard. And yeah, there's things you can go back and say that it's it, it's garbage, and there, there are in in retrospect. But the fact that it 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 set a standard that yeah, other games have since surpassed. But it was the best game of its, of its you know of its genre for its time. And it's it's a shame really because like I I don't like putting Phil Spencer last because. Again, he's. I totally agree with you, Dav. He's done so much for gaming, and I do believe that he will get into the Hall of Fame at some point because of what he's done. And again, I'm going to talk about him a bit more on the podcast because um, we've got so much to discuss about him specifically today. But with those scores, um, it was actually quite close. Uh, I mean, we already know the runaway leader is the Stamper Bros with 15. Um, but I'll just go to... Uh, yeah, uh, so... But joining him is Nobuo Uematsu with 9... Uh, and then uh, obviously Shinji Mikami on seven and Phil Spencer on five. Um, but again, that was actually really tough. I had to. St- I was staring at this for about two minutes, and the only one I could really decide on was the Stamper Brothers being number one because I think they've all. Im- I think I think those games have impacted all four of us really, and I could tell that straight away. But Dav Weeks, that was. That was that a very good show. You brought you brought your A game once Swine. again. Um, let's start with game. Um, and uh, I'll start this time because obviously I ended. Uh, and I'm just going to briefly talk about this super quickly. Um, and it w- I, I was actually going to bring a different game literally until 15 minutes before. But then I thought, you know what? I'm already talking about him and what he's done. I'm going to say Final Fantasy VII. And the reason why I'm going to say Final Fantasy VII is because it essentially popularized JRPGs in the West. <laughs> you know, it, it, I, there, there are people who say that six is better. They could be they could be right. I completely understand if, if, if that's what they'd say. But there's things... That Final Fantasy VII did beyond just being a brilliant game, it basically helped 
propel PlayStation into being the best-selling console of of the 90s. Um, It showed graphically what the PlayStation could do with the space that the PlayStation had to create these huge worlds and is the reason why it wasn't uh, on the N64 because they wanted to build this huge world and the the, the N64 couldn't do it. Um, Memorable characters. I've, I've got a list of things here. Memorable characters. Cloud is in Smash because he's so beloved. Sephiroth is one of the greatest villains of all time. The soundtrack I've already spoke about is incredible. I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but I imagine if you have played that game, it's probably one of the first games that ever made you cry. It definitely was. It's still a game that I played it two years ago in Germany on tour, and I still cried at a very specific point. Um, It's so beloved that the remake uh, was one of the most, um, I guess, one of the most demanded remakes of its not only its generation, but of all time when it comes to video games. That game was continually being asked to be remade until last year. and the story is in, is actually incredible. It was one of the first games I ever played where it wasn't just like Mario, you know, you, you go from start to finish. I know Chrono Trigger was there as well. It really uh, pushed, pushed it, but Final Fantasy VII, for me, got me into playing Final Fantasy games. And if it wasn't for Final Fantasy VII, I don't know if I would have by now. I maybe I would have played 15 because it was so big, but that was the game that got me to love Final Fantasy games. And I I think based on what it's done in gaming culture, I think it does deserve to at least be nominated. Um, yeah, awesome. That's me done. Uh, who's next? Uh, Dav, Dav Gabe, let's let's do a reversal, like I said. You want to talk about memorable characters? Yes. How about these? Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle. <laughs> We're talking Pokemon Red and Blue. I was going to go Whoa. Red and Blue, just saying. Oh. I looked at it earlier and I was yeah, going to go think, with them. I think that might win. <laughs> like, the amount we talk about Pokemon and... For what it like, we talk about different games like Super Mario Bros. For me, uh, I don't think is anywhere near the best game in that series. No, but it got in because of the what it started. Hmm. Pokemon Red and Blue for me is the best game in that series, <laughs> and look what it started. Mm-hmm. Like a game I've been playing this week that we're going to talk about on the podcast is a game that is basically a rip off of Pokemon, <laughs> and there are so many games that are ripped off of Pokemon. Half the Dragon Quest games are rip-offs of Pokemon. Nino yeah. Cooney. We're talking about games that inspire uh, RPGs. Like, Pokemon Red and Blue. Not only is it a masterpiece in so many ways, the, the, the soundtrack is so yes. iconic. It's memorable. Like, it's so memorable. Like, you can you can just hear at least one song in your head right now from Pokemon yeah. Red and Blue, right? And we talk about the characters and the TV series and the, the Pokemon trading cards and all of that culminates is, is this one big thing and, and all because of this game Pokemon Red and Blue or Red and Green if you're from Japan like and the idea of, of, of dividing these two games which you know is a divisive topic in itself but it brought people together and the trading and the zeitgeist following these, these games was enormous like mm-hmm. people they were like there you go there's different Pokemon in each one go and trade them and you'd be like oh, yeah that's not going to get me wait a minute you get Weedle and I get Caterpie. Oh yeah, let's switch, please. <laughs> like it was insane. Like mm. it's such an important part of our childhood. We talk about the Stamper Bros. And we talk about Rare and, and yeah. how important that was to us. Pokemon, the most successful, the most financially successful gaming franchise ever, deserves a place in the video game Zahoy Hall of Fame. And what <laughs> better game than Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue? We are lovely. Very, very lovely. I mean, it's hard to just say anything beyond that. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, let's go to Zach, who's fading into the cosmos right now. I am. I am. I can't turn my light off because I don't have to come away from my headphones. So I'll fix That's it right. when we get to the podcast. I don't know. It's you, fine. You can't even see me at all now. I'm You're speaking to really, the auroras. <laughs> if I stay really still, I disappear. Okay. It's just got uh, what, very dark in here for a Don't time. worry, man. We can still hear you. That's, that's the most That's important the most thing. important thing. What are you going with? Uh, it's tricky because I, I was stuck between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 1 for basically the same reasons I've already said. Mm. Um, they both, to me, I prefer Resident Evil 4, I'm not going to lie. But in terms of genre defining, it kind of has to be Resident Evil 1 uh, because I, uh, I do think that it, it shifted the way that we look at horror in games. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've already talked about it. Yeah, you guys know the game. I don't need to sell it one way or another. Either you're into it or you're not. Yeah, um, that's, as, that, that's as, as good as I can sell it. I mean, one of the biggest gaming franchises of all time is not a bad entrance. 
um, to, the, to, to your uh, to your. But I'm gonna uh, have gameplay. to go with Resident Evil One if we're going with a okay. With a, a Resi, Resi One. Title. Okay, one one specifically. Okay, awesome. Uh, do you want to say any more, Zach? Or are you? Um, no, pretty... I'm good. I said it all when I went off on my tangent about <laughs> Shinji Mikami. Who's awesome. <laughs> talking? Uh, Dab weeks. How about you? Uh, I'm kind of doing similar to Jack. Um, to, to Zach, like it, like I've taken inspiration from my previous thing because I've gone with Conker's Bad Fur Day, oh, which wow, is okay. my favorite rare game. Yeah, like firstly, just because um, it's a great game, I love playing it, and it also it's written game. very much of its <laughs> oh time God. in its crude and crass oh, sense of humor, no. very much in the vein of like South Park and Jackass and. And Family Guy, you know, all this early noughties trash, you know, and it fits in so beautifully with it all, with a really cheeky bit of British humour about it as well. Um, I hate you. I'm looking at this now. I don't know what to do. What can I say? (laughs) such a good shout, man. Such a good shout. Like, purely just because one of the bosses is an opera singing piece of shit. (laughs) 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 A song that I still remember to this. Yeah. Can we hear the what's the? Can we hear the first line from you? It's Dad? the poo song. I am the great mighty poo, and <laughs> I'm going to throw my shit at you. <laughs> <laughs> There's something so great about him being called the great mighty poo, oh like like God. a really clean way of saying it, and then he just immediately okay. says shit. Perfect. So there's that, uh, right? But then also just um like my favorite bit about it is all the movie references. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they they do a whole level based on Matrix, based on Alien, based on Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, it's like do. guys, like do you think like I'm imagining a development meeting where they're kind of going, "Oh, you know, this joke may get old very quickly. You know, <laughs> these games aren't going to be around. Like they, these movies might not be cool." And like, and everyone just comment, "Fuck it, do it." Yeah, yeah they didn't. Yeah, care. yeah. They didn't. Also, um, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep talking. Uh, yeah, multiplayer. yeah, yeah. No. Oh, the multiplayer is don't. awesome. The the teddy bear fighting, like Saving Private Ryan kind of war game between the teddy bears. Great. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Okay. That's I, it. Conquer's bad for it for a day. All right. I I'm 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 Sue doubting me. myself now. <laughs> I've I've chosen my three, but I'm doubting myself completely now. I I don't know what to go with. Um. <laughs> oh God. I've chosen mine. All uh, right. How are you doing, guys? Have you chosen yours? Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Zach. Okay. Um. I mean, I think you can see this one coming. Final Fantasy has to go at the bottom because I've never yeah. played it. That's cool, man. I, I kind of figured that as soon as Sorry, you said you were No, it's fine. Uh, Conquest by Third A is in a, is in a, a tight second because uh, I have played it and I really like it. I've actually never beaten it and I've never played the multiplayer. So maybe I should go and get it. I wonder if I can get it on any of my consoles right now. Maybe. Mm. I wouldn't have gone with Red and Blue because I find Red and Blue are great, but I don't want to play them anymore. But Pokemon, you're right, man. It's it's unbeatable. How do you fucking beat Pokemon? Yeah, it might be else. it might be up there as to, you know the top series of any for me. Well, it's, I don't know why I didn't even highest, think of it. Why didn't I think a, to bring that? It's the Jeez. highest gross grossing media uh, media product of. Dude, I still like, play Pokemon time, like all the time. Like I'm still playing Pokemon, Pokemon Showdown world. constantly, oh. and every time I have enough memory on my phone, I get Pokemon Go again. <laughs> so uh, just to, just to recap, so it's. Uh, so it was Conquer's Bad Fur Day with three, and then Pokemon Red and Blue with five, yeah? I gave you a thumbs up, and then realized you couldn't see. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I see. You're the Cosmos, man. I'm just yeah. talking about the Cosmos. It's fine. The Aurora uh, gave you yeah. a thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, should we go to... Uh, should we start with Dav Weeks, just because I'm looking at the score here. Dav, what do you go with? Right, so... Resi's at the bottom, unfortunately. Boo. Yep. I'm, yeah, I mean, I love it. I do. I really do love it, but... Come on, Final Fantasy VII and Pokemon? Don't make me choose. Yeah, no, that's choose, true. Man. That's that, true. Those like, are tough. And, like, because I have to think of this in context, this is the Hall of Fame. And just because of the influence, the goddamn influence of Pokemon, that mm. has to be the top one. Yeah, yeah. Like, the fact that I made 50 quid selling some bits of cards to people in school. Yeah. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that was yesterday, wasn't it? Like at, at the fence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was Charizard, yeah. twenty quid. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Like it, like it. You know, it wasn't just a game; it was a movement. You know, yeah. it was an artistic mm, bloody movement. Um, and don't, Final Fantasy's coming back. Don't worry, man. That that'll, yeah, that'll no, get there eventually. I, 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 yeah, but that, that's know, green in the know, dude, I've, <laughs> I've got no plans to play it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Dave Gape. Hello. 
I got a feeling I know what's last for you. <laughs> <laughs> well. Maybe I'm maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong. Ooh. Because I do appreciate where Resident Evil um holds its place in the gaming archives and, and what it's created and the whole genre of horror games is basically because of Resident Evil. Hmm. So that's actually getting my three points. Ooh. Ooh. My five points are going to that little conquer. <laughs> yeah. There Conquer's we go. Bad fur day and one point to um, Final Fantasy VII because I've never got past Midgar and I've tried multiple times. I just don't enjoy it. And I think Final Fantasy IX is by far a better game. Fair enough. Fair enough. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. Um, <laughs> and assholes uh, have even bigger opinions. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, I don't, did I mention mine? I can't remember if I did. Um, no. So, uh, no, I haven't. So, um, where is where is my scum looking at mine now? Uh, all right. So, I, I did go with. I had to go with Conquer's Bad Fur Day with one just because. Not because I think it's a bad game. I actually really love that game. But I do feel. Uh, when I look at Resident Evil 1 and Pokemon Red and Blue and I think of what those games have done for the series, like they're from two of the biggest series of all time. So it's not necessarily that I think Conquest Bad Fur Day is a bad game, but I'm thinking, like you said, Hall of Fame. Like with Final Fantasy and, and Pokemon, for me, it had to go Conquers Bad Fur Day 1, Resident Evil 1, uh, with, three, with three points, and then Pokemon Red and Blue with five. Saying that, though, I it's such a weird thing to say my favorite game of the th of the three would be conquer's bad fur day but personally i think pokemon red and blue should probably be there even though i don't enjoy i wouldn't really play it again if that makes sense it's one of those weird things um all right i'll tally up the scores uh we've got you could probably already guess what is coming out on top that is pokemon red and blue with 15 um 15. and in second place is conquer's bad fur day which is oh. hilarious because i was actually got into the video games hall of fame who knows what I'm talking about? I'm talking bullshit. So it's actually in there. Wow. There we go. So we got um, today we had I didn't Pokemon. Catch that. Can you rephrase it? Shut up. <laughs> that's, that's how unbelievable it is. Yeah, that's a shit. <laughs> it is unbelievable. <laughs> but I am really proud that there'll be like the Dav Week Swing, which now has Papers, Please, and Conquers Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, so we've got, uh, like I said, we got Pokemon Red and Blue, Conquers Bad Fur Day, um, and on the other side, we have Naboa Umatsu. And the Stamper Bros. I feel like it's pretty... Again, that's a pretty good collection of of people. Uh, and that is that is it. That is that is our inductees for this month. Thank you very much for listening today. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, then please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon. Tell your friends and give us, give us a review or a comment. It would mean the world to us. Um, this is Video Games Ahoy. And we'll see you next month. Ahoy! Ahoy! <laughs> Bye. <laughs>